Welcome back to tutorial number two, where I will go over the views, I guess. Let's start with color by district is obviously what you see there. Color by population imbalance is this will, uh, green is excess and red, which you do not see, but hold on a minute. Now you see, is obviously deficit. It's just a way to visualize the uh, criteria rather than just seeing them as numbers. Now, vote imbalance. Blue is Democrat. Red is Republican. You want it purple, which means it's competitive. If you get a blue district, that's packed Democrat. If you get a red district, that's past Republican. Well, actually, the blue or red or whatever they are, are the first two selected items in here in that order. So. If these are flipped, then Dems will be red. And then there's the third color by compactness, which is just like color by population. Green means it's compact. Red means it's stringy. Um, color by demographic is just the election data that you loaded in. Uh, let's go back to color by district. And you can see labels. If you show map labels. First number is the district. It's zero indexed because it's easier to work with. It's zero indexed. Second number is population excess or deficit. Um, positive or negative, obviously. Third number is the isoparametric quotient. Uh, it's a measure of compactness. It's basically the area divided by the length of the perimeter squared. Uh, so a circle turns out to have a compactness of 1, and a straight line has a 0. It's a really nice feature of that, is that it's always between 0 and 1. Um, and it's this here is a weighted average, so to speak, of all the district's compactness. It's trying to get it as high as possible. can make it out better if you go by one of these. The numbers have more contrast. Then there is no map, one map, or four maps. Four maps, it allows you to see the top four current maps as opposed to just the top one. It's kind of fun to watch. A no map is of course no map. This anti-aliasing is just for when you're showing the lines, it'll make the lines look smoother. Um, let me stop this. Stop. So that's more responsive. And turn on map lines. You can see it's all cluttered, but when you add anti-aliasing, it cleans it up. What that basically does is it draws the map at four times the size and then scales it down to half that using interpolation and then scales it down again. So, and 2x it only does it twice the size and only scales it down once. And then, of course, you got your zoom in features. Voila. And you can undo a zoom level because you can keep zooming in multiple times or you can just reset the zoom back to normal. And of course you can flip it. So that covers everything on the view menu. Let me clean it up. Now Managed locks, this is just so you can take, for instance, say I'm going to take the counties, the, anything with the county name of Door, so this is essentially Door County, and I'm going to say take, you know, whatever, most of the parts of it, whatever the district they're in, that would be majority vote, make them all that. If I leave it at current value, it'll just, it won't change them, it'll just lock it so they don't move. So we want majority vote. 
okay and now this which is Door County here is always going to stay the same district so if you notice this break right here this could cause it to have this one district and this another district because they're not really connected but we're making it not do that by locking the district reset zoom so that's all that is these are your evolution features you can control evolution a bit I'll get into those more later um, what I want to focus on now is well let's go to the graph the stats and the sliders. The sliders kind of drive these other two things. These control what evolution favors. They control the selection function, so to speak. Um, compactness, just the isoparametric quotient, it tries to maximize. Contig contiguency is tries to get rid of these little things right here where they're not really connected to the main bunch. Basically it just measures it as the some of the population that is not connected to the main bunch and tries to minimize that. Equal population, it tries to make all the population the same. Uh, so they all, each district has the same number of people in it. And you can put a cap on the population difference between the least populated and most populated that it will try to meet. That's the geometric criteria. Fairness criteria is representativeness that uh, tries to get the ratio of the delegates or seats to match the ratio of the popular vote. Um, voting power balance is the number, the, the likelihood that a citizen will be able to uh, change the outcome of an election is voting power. Um, and the balance of that is just to make it so that all the citizens have the same likelihood. So. They each have exactly one vote, so to speak. That's a one person, one vote metric there. Uh, wasted votes is trying to make uh, the districts competitive. Um, if there's a district like, let's see, let's get the votes here. There we go. This district here, it, Republicans are getting 53% of the vote, almost 54. So that's the three to four percent that's over the needed 50% is wasted votes, and it'll just total those all up. And here you see them totaled by party. Um, to make it competitive, you want to minimize the total number. But this last slide over here, voting power imbalance it tries to make the ratio of the number of wasted votes to the number of votes for each party the same so that no one is being you know packed or cracked so to speak uh, those are the fairness criteria and then this final master slider up here will determine whether the uh, evolution algorithm favors geometric things over, you know, fair things, because the those two categories tend to conflict. Uh, if you want the most fair, easiest thing to do is to just make it all random, like, if I hit that, it should randomize. There you go. Reset, that's what reset does, it randomizes and starts over the graph. Um, and you show, you can see, geometrically, it's it's horrible, but in terms of fairness, um, proportion. Well, let's color by vote imbalance, and we can see it's nearly all purple, which means every district has the same amount of ratio of Democrats to Republicans, and they're all very competitive for the election. So this is very fair. It's um, clearly though not very contiguous. This would be a, a nightmare to try to figure out who's your citizen or whatever. Um, so that's it. Those are the view options. And now I kind of really messed up. I randomized that, so I'm going to have to let that go or restart it with uh, by reloading in the data. Oh, 
there you go. There's the third uh, view, show data. This is each one of these rows is attached to, let's bring the lines back. is attached to one of these little boxes that are enclosed by the lines. And it's got all the data in it, like uh, the population and the vote counts and whatnot, and what district it belongs to, which determines how it's colored in this view. Um, so those are all the views, constraints. Um, I think that's good for this tutorial. I'll leave evolution and the file options for another tutorial. Um, oh, and the sliders. Sorry, the sliders obviously control the selection pressure. And those will correlate to, um, this will show how well each one is doing. You have the geometric measures on the right side. Uh, Border length, that's compactness, disconnected population, that's contiguity, population imbalance, equal population. And on the left side, you have the fairness criteria, and as you see, they match up one to one as well. And this graph will show how it's doing on each of those. And, and on the graph, it tries to make them all minimize. I just have them, I flipped them if they need to be flipped, so they're all going in the same direction. And then you'll see the stats also. Stats is just another view of the data that's shown in the graph. Stats will give you the raw numbers. <coughs> um, these total values here, the summarized values, will correspond to these. But this is the breakdown by district here and by party here. And you can see it's got a lot of data. And, oh, and you can just highlight and click in here. Press Control A to select all, and then Control C to copy it, and then you can, for instance, paste it in to Notepad, and you can also paste that directly into a spreadsheet such as Excel, and it will format into all the cells and look all nice. And then you can do whatever you want with it in Excel. So I think that about covers that. I'll end this tutorial, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and we'll watch the next one. Thanks.